So now I'll introduce Mr. Josh Levinson from the Gilman class of 1989. Josh Levinson is the founder and owner of the run-in specialty company Charm City Run, which many of you may have heard of. Mr. Levinson is a 12-year man, and after Gilman, he attended Washington and Lee University, where he was on the dean's list and received a degree in economics. Mr. Levinson played collegiate lacrosse and football for four years at WNL, captain in both teams in his senior year. He is a Division III All-American defenseman and the recipient of the Preston R. Prez Brown Most Valuable Athlete Award. Following college, Mr. Levinson worked in commercial banking at First Union Bank and the U.S. Corporate Group. And after that, he came back to Baltimore as a Cooper Fellow at Gilman, where he taught middle school math and coached for two years. He then went on to receive his MBA with a concentration in entrepreneurship from the University of Texas in Austin, and then worked as a supply demand manager for Dell Computer Dimension Desktop Group, and later as the Director of Business Development for Pavilion Technologies. Fourteen years ago, Josh started Charm City Run. Charm City Run boasts stores now in Annapolis, Baltimore, Bel Air, Columbia, and Timonium, as well as Vita, which is a women's casual boutique in Belvedere Square here in Baltimore, and an endurance sports sport management company that directs and times 90 running events throughout the year. Mr. Levinson's wife, Kara, Ms. Levinson, teaches second grade here at Gilman, and his son, Ben, is a member of the class of 2019, and daughters, Lucy and Samantha, attend RPCS. So please join me in welcoming back to Gilman, Mr. Josh Levinson. Josh? Victor, that, that was a uh, tough act to follow, for sure. Uh, Mr. Smythe, Mr. Hubeck, the Cotton Swindell family, distinguished faculty, and Gilman Upper School students. It is great to be with you this morning. Ten years ago, I was asked to deliver the Cotton Lecture. I looked at the accomplishments of the past speakers like Victor did and said, what am I doing up here? It's great to be back. When I heard that I had the opportunity to come back after ten years, I was thrilled. Ben was five the last time I was up here, and now he's in the audience. And Kara, of course, teaches in the lower school. And then I saw Victor's name. Great an NFL football player and me on the same stage. I know who I would want to hear more, and I'm not even in high school. Well, I needed some inspiration from Ben, so I went into his room as he was studying late at night, and I said, what do you want to hear? And he said, well, I don't want to be bored, I don't want to be lectured, and I don't want to be surveyed. Don't ask people to raise their hand. So with that positive energy, let's get going. My goal for the Cotton Lecture today is to share a fellow Greyhound's path into small business, discuss how we view the community we hope to create and serve, and talk about how you can prepare to start a small business and what Gil how Gilman can help you get there. When I graduated from Gilman in Washington and Lee, I thought I would be a company man. I thought of myself as a team player that would fit in well in the corporate world. My dad was kind of the wild man, always had a better way to do things, could never have a boss. I was more of the keep your head down, work hard, everything's going to work out kind of guy. Charm City Run was simply the result of the experiences I had before 2002. Most of you will go to college and then go to work or head to graduate school and then go to work. But all of you, like Victor, will have a pause in your life. Only three things will happen. You will switch careers, You'll remain in your current line of work, or you will start a business. In 2001, I was in my first job at Dell after business school. I reached out to my, my mentor the previous summer and asked if I should apply for the brand manager, brand manager job for Dell's laptop. It was called the Inspiron. She very nicely rejected me. Stay put. Gain more experience. That was my first pause. I was a little frustrated with this conversation, and shortly thereafter, I was having dinner with a former UT professor of mine, who was also the first president of Dell, who mentioned that he had just become chairman of the board at a small software company. The words small 
software and startup in those days meant raise lots of money, go public, and make lots of money. That would be great. Who cares if I didn't know anything about process manufacturing software? I still don't. Well, I walked into a toxic work environment where everyone spoke poorly about each other. We were lying to investors about our potential and our product. We were changing our mission every day. I did not know what I wanted to do, but I could not keep going to work there. And that was my second pause. When I was 10, I had a stepfather come into my life who was a runner. He had the headbands and the wristbands and the short shorts and everything you imagine a runner in the 70s would wear. <laughs> but despite this get up, I gave running a try. I was overweight and just remember my mom and I wanted to spend a little more time together. So we started running a few nights a week. I have not stopped. Even while playing football and lacrosse, I would run during exam week and during the summer. I have never finished a run wishing I hadn't done it. It is exercise, but it is also peace and therapy. And selfishly, it is alone time, which everybody needs. Running was something Karen and I also loved to do together, and a subject we covered the first time we met. While in Austin, Kara was teaching at the St. Andrews Episcopal School, where Dr. Harris taught. He actually got her her job there. And a colleague and her husband challenged us to do a marathon. Well, we weren't going to back down from a challenge. We did it, and it was terrible. It was about 1,000 degrees. We didn't drink enough water. I was wearing long lacrosse shorts. I think Kara was wearing an old T-shirt of mine. And it was terrible. And Kara intelligently said, we will never do this again. <laughs> and I thought that immediately when we finished. And then, of course, the next morning, I guess being a Gilman boy, I said, I think I can do better. Well, Kara was a little smarter than I was, and she knew I could only improve with some help. So she purchased a training program for me at the local running specialty store called Runtex. The group would gather at 5 a.m. every Saturday morning. Austin's hot. And we would go for long runs. And I noticed a few things I hadn't noticed before. The people in my group were from all walks of life. Race, income, religion were irrelevant. And I met some really great people. Also, there was a magic about the store. It seemed everyone was in a great mood. From the running elite to the beginners, everyone was part of the same club and everyone wanted to get a little better. It was electric. I also noted that the owner's kids were always in the store hanging around the college kids working there. I thought these kids will have such a positive upbringing, being around all these great role models that are working the store. On a trip home to visit family with our baby Ben in tow, Kara and I were running on the NCR trail. I was trying to settle on what I really wanted to do and I was tired of the two year job stops. It was time to invest in something long term. Kara turned to me on that run and said, Baltimore needs a run tax. And that is how Charm City Run was born. I hope that we could feed our family, because that's important. But I also hope we could do all the special things run tax had accomplished. I'm incredibly, I'm incredibly fortunate to work in a field I am passionate about. That is my wish for you. Find your passion. You can always make a job out of it. If you struggle to find what that is, find the person whose job you want. Not because of the money they make, or the car they drive, or the lifestyle they lead, but because of what they do at 10 o'clock on Thursday morning. Keep in mind, Michael Dell did not start Dell because he wanted to be rich. He started Dell because he was a 19-year-old in college who loved putting computers together. Steve Jobs did not start Apple to make money. He wanted to build the greatest thing ever. In a slightly lesser example, I had a passion for running, what it could do for people, and I wanted to be the owner of Runtex. There is always a reason to not start a business. There is risk, and there is a safer path to financial security. All of you will be able to get jobs. That is perhaps the biggest obstacle to entrepreneurship. Many people that start businesses have no choice because they can't find another job. It is hard to sit there and say, I can do job A and make X amount of money or start company B, which is going to take a lot of time, be very stressful, and may never make money. This decision is incredibly difficult, but what made my decision easier was my current situation at the, at the small software startup was untenable. I just couldn't go to work there anymore. Starting a business is not easy, 
but it is the most rewarding adventure you will ever take on. Most people that do it never regret it, whether they pass or fail. I love the fact that if we fail, I have no one to blame but myself. I love mentoring and working with the young men and women that we have hired over the years. I love the people that walk in our doors, their stories, their struggles, what brought them in and their goals. We can help people change their lives for the better. They may have done it anyway, but maybe Charm City Run played a part. On one level, we are a store. You can come in and buy stuff. But we aspire to be a community, a way of life. We want you to join our marathon groups and finish something you never thought was possible. Or walk a mile pain-free or finish a 5K. We want to inspire you to do better. If we can get you that first accomplishment, we have played a part in changing lives. And since everyone is nicer after a run, hopefully we can create a friendlier community as well. We also want to strengthen our bond with our customers by serving our community. If we cannot convince people to shop local, we cannot survive. If you type running shoes into Google, you only get 60 million results. If you type buy running shoes, it narrows down to 25 million. There are lots of places to buy gear. But those outlets cannot create a community or be members of our community. Small businesses are better for our economy. They are more generous employers, better stewards of the environment, and shopping local keeps more of, the, more of our dollars in Maryland. For some, that is enough. But we need to do all of those things and also support local. The races we start benefit all local nonprofits. The races we manage raise hundreds of thousands of dollars annually for local causes. And our company, Charm City Run, donates 1% of our revenue to nonprofits, environmental organizations, organizations that help keep Baltimore fit, and organi organizations like Bridges and the Living Classrooms that give motivated Baltimore City students an opportunity at this. This opportunity, if fulfilled, changes a family's trajectory forever. We want people to say that they love shopping at Charm City Run because what we do inside our doors and the difference that I hope we make, but also because we support causes that matter. We want our employees to love working with us because they're paid fairly and like the work, but also because we do the right thing. Maybe that makes them work a little harder. Maybe that makes them appreciate Charm City Run a little more. And maybe they're a little quicker and a little more excited to come to work. We have been awarded one of the best places to work in Maryland the last two years. Our community involvement has to be a piece of this. People want to be part of groups that make a difference. Our goal is simple. No company our size will do more for the community than we do. It is easy and tempting to do less. The cost of doing business does go up every year. And everyone in this room has heard someone complain about the Affordable Care Act. But I can remember Runs with Cara wondering why big companies didn't do more. Well, when you have your own organization, you have no one to look at but yourself. We have to be the example. I never want anyone to look at Charm City Run and say we could have done more. If you think you want to start a business, the most important thing you can do is to try to figure out what you love to do and find someone out there whose job you want. Get in front of people whenever you can. Act, sing, do public speaking. Run for student council or captain a team. Most of you, regardless of your career, will have to sell yourself. Know the numbers. Accounting and economics matter. You have to be able to measure success and quantify risk. Lastly, some of the finest liberal arts schools out there are starting entrepreneurship programs. Gilman is always in a leadership role. Gilman has hosted a two-day entrepreneurship symposium called the Startup Experience the last two years. I participated this year, and the class of 2015 that did this were outstanding. In 2017, there will be a full class. Consider taking it. But the most important thing you can do is to be Gilman. When I played football here, I had a coach who would always say two words before we left the locker room. Be Gilman. To me, this meant try your hardest, always play with class. Gilman did not teach me how to start a business, but it did teach me how to be. I learned discipline. I learned how to work. I learned to try hard. I was never the straight A student, 
or the best athlete. But I wanted to be. I wanted to be better. I want Charm City Run to be better every single day. I want to be a better father and husband. Sometimes I am. Sometimes I fall a little short. There was no Gilman Five in 1989, but it was everywhere. Look, there is an expectation of excellence here. We do not talk about it because it conflicts with humility. But watching you guys sing and act, shoot and tackle, and what you learn, it is impressive. And doing it with class and respecting everyone are equally as important. These are also the qualities of leadership. Good leadership leads to great teams, which leads to successful businesses. Being Gilman will make you a success in business, but more importantly, life. Consider starting something. Chase a passion that can prov provide for you emotionally and financially, and that can also support your family and community. And always, always be Gilman. Have a great spring break. I know Ben deserves it. I know the leader of 2A deserves it. I wish you the best.